So what we have here is the intersection of my ignorance and my desire to celebrate Hanukkah this year. My only real exposure to the holiday is that Rugrats Passover special on Nickelodeon back in the day. You're a hero, Moses! You let the babies to freedom! On the subreddit 52 Weeks of Cooking, our challenge is to make something Jewish, and I thought I was going to make matzo ball soup or something. But I was pleasantly surprised to discover that tadig, Persian rice dish, is Jewish. Or at least my non-exhaustive internet search told me so. Okay, to make my version of tadig, you need to source these two ingredients. They aren't hard to find at all, but odds are you probably don't have these in your kitchen right now. So first, we're going to need some basmati rice. You can buy them in these small bags, and compared to other rices like jasmine, the grains are very long, especially after they've been cooked. Don't even attempt to make this dish without basmati. It just won't be as good, and rice is cheap, so get the good stuff. The second ingredient, which is not cheap and actually entirely optional, but if you choose to admit it, this dish is just really a pass. That would be saffron. You can use as much or as little as you want. Remember, it's optional. What I would use about a quarter to a third of this tin, because I like it that much. It adds an amazing aroma to the dish and the color it brings really makes everything seem so festive. Place the saffron in a mortar and grind it into a fine powder. Add a few tablespoons of water and set aside. This is going to be used to perfume the dish and add a beautiful reddish orange to the grains and give the dish that extra wow factor. Take two cups of basmati rice and rinse it in a bowl of water. My technique is to agitate the rice with my hands for a few seconds to get the excess starches off the grain and into the water and then drain the water. Each time you drain the water, the water should be less and less cloudy. Your goal here is to get the water to be nearly clear. Mine took about five washes. Drain and then set aside. We're gonna want some fried shallots with this dish. The cool people over at Serious Eats recently published that you could make it in a microwave. Place your shallots in oil in a microwave safe dish and microwave for 30 second intervals until deep golden brown. Boil four quarts of water and season very aggressively with slightly less than half a cup of kosher salt. Add in our drained basmati rice and cook between 6 to 8 minutes. We're looking to par cook the rice so the center should still have an al dente bite to it with a small circle of uncooked rice in the middle of each grain. Drain and rinse with cold water then set aside. Set the burner to medium on a 10 inch nonstick pan. Add 3 tablespoons of the shallot oil we made in the microwave and 3 tablespoons of butter. The moment the butter has fully melted, add in our rice. We want a nice even layer spread across the pan. Try not to smash the rice and gently coax it into an even layer. With the back of our spatula, we're going to create five holes to channel the steam away from the bottom, which in theory should help with crust formation. Wrap a kitchen towel around the lid of the pan and cover the pan with the lid. This is to prevent the condensate from coming back into the dish. Keep the pan on medium heat and every five minutes, turn the pan a quarter turn in order to help even browning. Continue this for about 30 to 45 minutes. Take about one and a half cups of the cooked rice and mix in with the saffron water we made earlier. Before adding the rice back, evenly spread the fried shallots made in the microwave into the pan of torching rice. Return to the pan the saffron rice and lightly mix, trying not to disturb the layers touching the pan. Continue to cook for an additional 5 minutes. Now we enter the trickiest part of this entire recipe, getting it out of the pan and onto a plate. First, we're going to take a spatula and slide it between the sides of the pan and the rice, trying to loosen it all around from around the circumference of the thing. Next, with appropriate hand heat protection, take a plate larger than the pan and situate the plate on top of it. With whatever you choose to securely hold the plate, Onto the pan with your hands, flip the whole thing over, and the rice should have emptied nicely onto your plate. Even if you mess up like I did, it's still going to taste good. I'll be more diligent in monitoring the rice crust so that I get a deeper brown color. But other than that, this dish came out excellent. If you like this video, please hit like and subscribe and comment down below what dish you want me to try making next.